The last time I stood in front of an audience was in December last year. I was at a four-day business conference in Sydney. And at that event, I had a conversation with an international business coach. And he said something to me that has had me thinking ever since. He said something that fundamentally shifted the way I see my role in managing hearing loss. And what he said was this, in the new market, relevance is more important than experience. Relevance is more important than experience. My initial reaction was to get offended. You see, experience has been an important part of my professional identity for many years. And experience is something that I value in a professional. So I figured this doesn't really have a lot of insight into my field. But then it got me thinking, what did he mean when he spoke of a new market and relevance? What does that even mean to me as an audiologist? Ironically, the answers didn't come during those four days in Sydney. It was a post on LinkedIn that put his comment into context for me. Many of you may have seen this post on social media. You see, it turns out that it's easier to see how technology might change other fields. It's a lot harder to see how it might impact on your own industry. And so I set myself a challenge, and I'm going to set the same challenge to you today. If you imagine a new market, how would you fill in the blanks? What would X, Y, and Z be? I realise this is a very polarising topic. On the one hand, we have a group of audiologists who are going, we've seen this all before, PSAPs have been around forever, there's always someone who's going to try and flog an amplifier to the unsuspecting public. On the other end, we have a group of technology enthusiasts who say, everything as we know it is about to change. Our reality may lie somewhere in between. And I think the challenge we have of redefining our relevance is figuring out what that mix may be. The reality is, if we're going to understand the challenges, we need to understand the greater market. And it's useful to frame hearing aids and assistive listening devices within the greater framework of consumer electronics. I've taken this diagram from an article written by Nick Hunn. Nick was one of the first people to coin the term hearable. He recognised that smart technology you could wear, a wearable, would move from the wrist to the ear because the ear has a lot of advantages. And there's some great hearable products on the market which are a lot more than the old personal amplifiers. There's a product called the Hera, which I believe is a fantastic precursor to a hearing aid. There's a product called Odera, which is a set of headphones where you can actually personalise your hearing profile by programming your audiogram into them and both of these products are available on the Australian Hearing Services Program. There's also a great product, a Bluetooth headset called the Hear and Wear. And this will actually slow down the rate of speech on a telephone call. I'd like to share with you two experiences that I've had in the clinic, which, has re which have really caused me to rethink my role in managing hearing loss. And I do believe that I handled these cases differently because I've shifted my mindset. The first experience is undoubtedly one of the strangest experiences I've ever had in the clinic, and I don't say that lightly. A gentleman that we estimated to be probably in his, his mid to late 70s came into our clinic and requested a hearing appointment. He wanted to see an audiologist, and he would only tell us that it was urgent, and the reason for the consultation was of a highly personal nature. He declined to give us any personal details. We only had his first name. And rather unusually, he asked if he could pay cash. He also insisted that I meet him on the day and assure him that I would be the audiologist to see him. To my relief, when he arrived on the day, he pulled out a set of Nihira IQ buds. 
And he said to me, I don't want a hearing test. I know I've got hearing loss, but I'm not going to wear hearing aids. I've invested in this company called Rehear Act, and I've got myself a set of red buds, and they really are helping me, but I don't think I'm using them properly. And I know that you could show me how to use them. I said, I'm happy to do that, but I'm curious. Why the drama? Why were you so evasive? I was really worried that you'd have a brain tumour. And he said, you're not the first audiologist I've been to. You're not the first clinic I've asked for help. One clinic told me that they wouldn't see me unless I paid for a hearing test. Another clinic said that they'd give me a free hearing test, but they wanted me to try their new hearing aid. And another clinic said they couldn't help me because I hadn't bought the product from them. I knew if I could just get in front of you, you would be able to help me, and it worked. Well, we spent the next half an hour together, and he was absolutely correct. He wasn't using the buds correctly. He'd chosen the wrong shape tip. He'd chosen the wrong size tip. He had them in at a really strange angle, and he'd misinterpreted how the app worked. So I was able to go through those with him, and we were able to improve and optimise the buds. We also were able to chat about why it is important to have an annual hearing checkup. And since his hearing seemed to be on the border of what New Hear is actually designed to do, I told him that he might need to consider using a different type of technology in the future if the buds weren't serving his needs. Relevance is more important than experience. He felt that I'd listened to him, I'd given him what he wanted rather than what I thought he needed. The next example is way more controversial, and I get that. I'm quite happy to debate the ethics of my clinical decision-making with you, but I think it's a really important experience to share with you, and this one should really get you thinking about our relevance, particularly in a market where you can purchase devices so easily online. Mum came to see me for a third opinion, she brought in with her her son and a thick file meticulously organised. These were all the reports that he'd had from visiting various professionals over the years. He'd been diagnosed with auditory processing disorder, sensory processing disorder and dyslexia. And up until recently, he'd very successfully used an FM system at school. But he was getting to that age where he was beginning to get self-conscious about the teacher using the microphone. And he was also going to start changing classrooms and having different teachers. Mum was really good at checklists, but said, look, his memory's so poor, I'm just concerned he's not going to use the microphone at all. He's going to forget. So she was wanting for him to have a trial with low-gain hearing aids. As parents do these days, she'd gotten onto social media and she'd found a Facebook group where parents were reporting good outcomes for their kids with hearing aids and she felt that she needed to give her son an opportunity to try them. She clearly done her research because she said to me, I know that I'm asking you to do something that goes beyond what you usually do. And if you're unable to or unwilling to, my husband and I have accepted that we may need to go to America to have this trial done. So here we've got a mum who knows what technology she wants her son to trial, who's very aware that there's a risk involved and that these devices need to be fitted safely, and yet she just can't access the services. Again, relevance and experience. What did this mum want compared to what we felt her child needed? I don't have all the answers. I think there's going to be an amazing range of technology that we're going to have available to prescribe. What I do know in this new market is that as an audiologist, I know the anatomy of the ear. I understand the physiology of hearing. I have insight into neuroplasticity. I know what it takes to adapt to a new technology. I know how to troubleshoot technology. I know how to customize it and optimize it. And more importantly, I know how to use technology to augment hearing to provide relief from tinnitus and to support listening for auditory processing. You see, I think for us as a profession, we 
challenge is not going to be in embracing the new. I think it's going to be in letting go of the 